This is Jed McKay, and you're listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Welcome back, Looney listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 265, and it is a live stream again, so welcome everybody out there in internet land. I am one of the high press of Conchu Ray, and joining me for a Moonshine, a new comic book review, as always, is the other high priest, Rebecca. Rebecca I know, we've had a pretty back. good run, haven't we? Hi. Yeah, I mean, like we've we... been quite lucky with timings. and We have, yeah, we have. Rebecca... I must say, for those that can see the video, I just noticed your t-shirt. Uh, my epic drawing. <laughs> Boy, to know, it was chosen very carefully. I've had this since I was about 16. What the? Okay. Yeah, well, you know, um, I, just, I thought, we'll see who actually watches the video. <laughs> fair enough fair enough um anyway i'm not going to mention it you, loonies you'll have to see the video to know what i'm talking about but anyway uh loony listeners we're here for of course as i said a new comic book review it is moon knight volume 9 issue 8 it's a, it's another entry from the team of jed mckay alessandro capuccio and oh my gosh rebecca if i can just praise Rochelle Rosenberg for the colours for this yeah, issue. Yeah, I mean, like, just oh my look, God. everyone's on point again. And, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful issue that uh, everyone should buy, even if it's just for, to appreciate the art and the colour, obviously. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, before any of that, of course, a just a big thank you to all our Patronis. Now, uh, a big shout-out to one of our latest Patronies, a new member. So a big, uh, a big thank you to Matthew Howell, uh, one of the hosts from Werewolf by Night, the uh, the Werewolf by Night podcast. That's very nominative uh, he... determinism there. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Uh, thank, thank you, Matthew, so much for for, for joining Rebecca. That yeah. Um, what does that What does that mean? It means when your name express expresses what you do. Oh, for example, yep. like. My, when I broke my hand, I saw Mr. Hand, the hand surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Matthew Howell of Woolworth by Night. It's very I know, crazy. Cool. It's crazy. I thought that as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, it's just like, yeah. So now you know the name for it. Like. Um, <laughs> um, and Matthew as well, for, for Petrunis, such as Matthew, will be privy to. Uh, we did a, uh, a bonus episode for the Petrunis, uh, Rebecca. We I did saw. Let, Mm, let's get sheet faced. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was a little bit of cocktail mixing. It was a lot of fun. A big thank you to the uh, the hosts Matthew and Jacob, and of course the power of Chad for that one. Uh, also, as well, uh, thanking Drew Toombs and Daniel Doing, uh, top tier Petrunis, uh, as well as CLZ Comics and Dreamland Comics from Schoenberg, Illinois. Uh, so Rebecca, yeah, we're here. Look uh, in the prompt sheet. I don't know if you've seen it. I had another re-look. I don't know if it's entirely correct. I, I was, I saw this in our group and I thought, wow, this mm-hmm. is pretty cool. Uh, but it may not be correct, right? Well, um, I, I don't know. I have literally no idea. I thought, um, because I also saw it on the Facebook page, I thought I should go and look and see where it came from. Uh, mm-hmm. For everyone wondering, we're talking about a list of uh, Moon Knight episode titles. Yeah. Um, it seems weird that it hasn't been spread widely across the net uh, in all the clickbait sites. But that doesn't mean, yeah. again, so I went to the Instagram that the picture came from because uh, it's got a, um, a thingy mark on it. What do you call it? A watermark on it. So I went to that, mm-hmm. the, the Instagram. And they say it's from the TV Time app, which is American only. So right. I didn't bother. I'm not going to install that. I'm not that keen to install random apps on my phone yeah um i think the only thing that makes me suspicious about it is that they had a miss marvel listing too and that seems really early for a list of titles for miss marvel but let's let's run through them and uh you know so the the, i mean because moon knight it's feasible i think we got the iron fist um episode titles about this far in advance of iron fist dropping so it's Mm -hmm. not unheard of they just they it's seem starting to very sound less on less. point to me. 
like yeah. like ones that I would guess at. But that doesn't mean they're wrong. Like it just means that maybe they're not very exciting. Um, so uh, I'll read through them. Season one, mm -hmm. so episode one, disassociation. As is that already a mistake there? Well, many Rebecca, people or? have pointed that out on the Facebook page. Thank you to all of yeah. them. Uh, that it, that we would be looking at dissociation if we're mm -hmm. talking about dissociative identity <laughs> disorder, but that it yes. could be a play on words. So could be. It seems uh, it seems an odd one to start the series with. Again, though, mm -hmm. we we go in there assuming this is right. Uh, episode two, lost my temper. What do you do? Yeah, this... pull, a, pull someone's face off. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, it, I, do, I don't know. Fine. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's of fine. Course. It's it could, just uh, yeah. season three above the law. Again, you can, you know, um, link that or relate that to Moon Knight. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. it could be generally given. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blood Moon episode four. I mean, I, I oh. wouldn't be surprised if an episode is called Blood Moon. Oh, we ha we have to have a phase of the moon somewhere. They're, they're, so. if, unless they're all phases of the moon. I mean, like, I'm mm. trying to think what they've done with the other ones. I know Hawkeye had, um, they had. Oh, those were all very Christmassy, weren't they? I can't remember now. I don't yeah. really pay attention oh, to episode yeah. titles, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Except for like, you know, Moon Knight, uh, episode five, Darkest <laughs> Night. That seems a little Batman. <laughs> it does. It but that does. I mean, that could be a play. It could be could a. Be, a, a, a... Could be. A playful jeer at it. And then ep episode <laughs> six is amazing. <laughs> Spectre, the... shake it up. I mean, like, what? what is that a what does song? that mean? I don't know. Yeah. You know. That's what I'm thinking of. The shake it up, shake yeah. it up, baby. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I, Look, I'm... They seem weird ones to guess, but I just, who knows? If they are, they less... are, but they're not exciting. Less and less likely. They're less not an exciting likely. list to me. You know, it's like, it's like a... Yeah. It's like, okay, all right. <laughs> like you haven't thought yeah, very true. hard, you know. I mean, to be honest as well, and again, uh, no, you know, no shade at people who love to check out titles of episodes and stuff, but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really excite me as well. I mean, but then again, no episode titles really ex uh, excite me. No, sometimes I, get, sometimes I have a chuckle when yeah. they come up on screen and I go, okay. oh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you know, like... Yeah. Um, I think uh, I think we I think we're past time where we can do a few spoilers for a few weeks ago on Boba for the Book of Boba Fett, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they had one that everyone's like well, it was called the Return of the Mandalorian. You know, that's mm -hmm. an title that makes you pay attention. Sure, okay. You know, like, um, yeah, yeah. like if there was one in this called Tigra, they come. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like you know, well, but but very non-specific ones, either referencing the moon or mental health, are not could, likely to excite yeah. me. So uh, if it had something like the other void or the over void, that would be exciting. Right, then we would get of, like proper yeah. excited about it. Um, yeah. If they had one called Hunter's Moon, even, you know, there'd mm -hmm, be speculation mm -hmm. there. But uh, there's there doesn't there's not a lot for us to do with them. So like, uh, they're not awful. There's just nothing yeah. really for people to speculate about, unless except about whether they've made a mistake with that first one. Um, yeah. And where Spectre Shake It Up came from, because I really hope that's a song now. Just a bit random, isn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, but, you know, hope, it, you... it has come from an app, apparently, that does TV listings. I mean, okay. also, I looked at them as Marvel ones, and they, they were a little bit more... They, they, were my, they were definitely ones I would make up from this Marvel TV show. <laughs> Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, but um, as you're saying, that's a bit too early, though. So you I think would maybe think that's... so. I mean, we don't even have a yeah. date for Miss Marvel to have the episode titles listed. I don't know how mm. early they decide on them either. Like, um, I don't know oh, how often, how early they submit them to apps. I just would have thought yeah. we'd have seen it. Like, given how hot a property Moon Knight is right now. I mean, like, I think mm -hmm. I'm sure you've discussed how many times the trailer was watched. Like, it was the most watched trailer. For any of the mm. MCU TV shows and and things like that, and every you know you've we've all seen the increased clickbaity articles about and like yeah. all the things we've seen about X person was seen on X set and you know yeah, Oscar yeah. Isaac's brother posted this picture that I'm really surprised that we've not seen a million. These are the episode titles. Yeah, so. fair enough. That's yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, so take it. How you will, loony listeners. Uh, there is a there is a picture 
uh, rundown of the titles in the in the Facebook group if you're part of the group. Um, be you be the judge. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, very generic titles. Yeah, I mean, I guess the last thing I'd say about it is that if they are true, the nice thing about it is they're not spoilery. Like, I don't yeah, feel like true. any of them give it because none of them really give us that kind of um, oh, let's speculate about this. Um, yeah. I don't feel bad sharing them on a podcast in advance. Do you know what I mean? It's like there is, yep. like if there'd been someone there, I'd been, I think we would have had the discussion. Should we give people a spoiler warning and let them come back in five minutes? Um, yeah. You know, like if one of them was Frenchie arrives or something like that. I don't know. I'm just making them up now. Like two muffins at My, Tina's, you know. Or, yeah. yeah. They call me Bushman. That's sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. You yeah. Yeah. Like go, yeah. Yeah. That's fair enough. Uh, my last little, comment for it Rebecca and leaning on that last title how would you feel towards a musical number in the I'm Moon Knight? up for so many yeah? musical numbers I mean, we've seen if, if there was Isaac like a... dancing now like, <laughs> we've seen if he can if he could top his uh, ex Mac is it ex Machina which is that the one he's in oh, where he does I'm the not, dance I'm not sure it's yeah, called something yeah. like that yeah is if he a good he dancer? Can... yeah is... he, 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 it, it's iconic Ray if you haven't seen <laughs> okay. it look it up so, fair yeah, enough, fair enough. You know, we know how... his guitar a bit from like, uh, you know. So, oh, yeah. how about how about Ethan Hawke? He was Did in a band. Ethan of Hawk? course, he can sing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got coordination. Yeah. He's got yeah. yeah. Okay, fair yeah, enough. He's got he's got it. How yeah. about old man Ethan? I would love you to see he can... Ethan Hawke. Yeah. Then. He or no? I mean, even dance. I, I, would, oh, I would. I'm imagining like a Christopher Walken like performance from Ethan Hawke dancing. You know? And honestly, I, I would, yeah, I think so too. I've yeah. actually seen yeah. Christopher Walken on stage. Very good singer, very good dancer, but yeah. Really? Yeah. I saw him in a musical. Oh, I wish I could do a per- an impersonation of him. He's got such I don't a think cool anyone voice. can do an impersonation no. of him, but like, uh, yeah. No one, could, no one cool. can do it justice. But it was yeah. exciting to get the episode titles drop. I mean, like we're definitely, yeah. we're in yeah. countdown. We're like, what, six weeks away? I know, yeah, and also, before I forget, I think I've got a little note towards the end of the show, Rebecca, but we were talking online mm-hmm. about, because it is getting closer, as you're saying, the weeks are flying yeah, by, Yeah, we've got to organise a um What we're like planning on watch. doing, so yeah, mm. if anyone has any thoughts, now's the time to start talking about it, maybe we'll put up a, a chat about it on uh, Facebook, but uh, mm-hmm. what I was talking about with Ray was possibly doing an immediate reaction with us you know fairly short because work and things and yeah. like yeah. it's very late for ray is it late for you mm-hmm. what time is it for oh you? no it's it'll be fine i think it's yeah it's about six eight o'clock right nine so o'clock, it's very late it, for yeah. americans yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like it right at the start of my work day uh mm-hmm. um and but yeah so i mean I, i've got like we've each we've got we've got time so doing a very quick reaction where we get everything wrong and go, ooh, mm-hmm. was that this? And who was that? And don't haven't looked anything up. And then later on at the weekend or just after the weekend, mm-hmm. organizing a group watch of some kind if people want to come. And then, but then doing a bigger episode, which would be with people's feedback or probably more yes. of a feedback episode because me and Ray will have given our initial feelings. So it'd be like reading your feedback and discussing it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, so yeah. a lot more episodes than you used to, but Moon Knight on TV. But, uh, it's going to be exciting. So, yeah, I mean, we have to, I mean, we're riding the wave. We'll be, as you said, Rebecca, that initial 30, 30 minutes or so of reaction will be so much fun. Uh, yeah, and, then, and it's going to be, everyone's obviously welcome to join. I, yeah, you know, absolutely. In the absolutely. Whatever, we'll, like, just have a laugh about it. You can, like, correct us on air because like, I'm, I'm going to be like, was that this? Was that that? Everyone who had the captions on yeah. will be like, oh no. Everyone remembered yeah. to put the captions on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Um, <laughs> I forgot to look at uh, the comments. I'm still in private chat. Hello, everyone. Oh. Um, yeah, time is an illusion, absolutely, uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, and then once the dust settles, then we, we you know, we open, open it up to, to another show. So that should yeah. be another episode. So that, that should be good as well. Uh, all right. Well, Rebecca, shall we head yeah, into the moonshine? As we mentioned, uh, yeah, we'll be looking at Moon Knight, Volume Nine, Issue Eight, Scarlet, 
And uh, I've just got some credits here. It's obviously released not that long ago, the 9th of February 2022. Writer Jed McKay, pencil, penciler and inker Alessandro Capuccio, colorist Rochelle Rosenberg, letterer VCs Corey Petit, and editors Tom Bravort and Martin Biro. Now, this is Rebecca. That is, and everyone there can see that's the main cover. Look at this technology. What's happening? I know, What's like, happening? it hasn't this broken is, this yet. Is where it's... <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca's always suspicious. I'm like, so and so wary. she should be. Like, the number of so ones we've be. tried to do and it's gone wrong because no, I've been God. there. So. No, no, no. It's, no, it's no, because it's just, as, you get to experiment. It's be- I, I experiment with Rebecca. I, I've, I've just got to say that. So <laughs> Rebecca's the guinea pig. So whenever any, I get all these bells and whistles, I get excited. And Rebecca happens to be on the other end. Unfortunately, it may or may not work. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so <laughs> this is the, the cover for those that can see on the live stream and on the video. Uh, but we also have variant covers by Greg Land. Uh, that That's one there. Nice. Looking quite nice. It, yeah. yeah. Actually, I didn't immediately recognise it as a, a land variant, but I can I see it now. I don't think you do without the faces as much. <laughs> that That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, and finally, there's a the last one. It's X gwen by Todd Nock. Um, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not those... into those kind of variants. I mean, it's it's nice, yeah. but I'm not really into them. The sort of yeah. character ones. So I'm just opening the window. So, <laughs> no worries. Oh, that's okay. Now, if you just bear with me, Rebecca, I'm just going to try one more time to try and get yep. the, the co- comic working. comic working. I shared it before for some reason, StreamYard. There it is, baby. Come on, let me connect it. Come on. Oh, then it disappears. Okay. Well, Shy. maybe you can't. Maybe you can't do it. Uh, I'm going to try one more time, Rebecca, and I'm going to. Everyone can experiment with me now as well, um, because why not? Uh, here we go. That works. Click. Come on. Share. No. Should... Oh, oh. There we go. It's happening. There we go. Okay, cool. So I should be able to then flick through it at my leisure, Rebecca. It's fantastic. Um, so <laughs> sorry for that. Loonies, just indulge us all. Uh, available on floppy, floppy format, currently only as well, and, and digital, and of digital, course, yeah. <laughs> on, on Comixology, just the, the tried and true for, for new releases. And what we do for, for listeners that may not know, uh, I am going to ask the lovely Rebecca again, if you would be so kind as to I know, it's like read blind my... reading. Yes, ex- I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my hack need writing. Uh, oh my gosh! Can I just say this is a really cool episode? Uh, yeah, issue. Such so a cool it was issue. really You've been waiting for it for a while. Oh my god! Uh, yes, and after Rebecca reads the the fantastic, her fantastic rendition, not the writing, uh, we'll get into some key moments, and we'll talk about writing and art and references there's a lot of references and characterizations and then we'll cap it off with our beloved con issues rating system so uh yeah that should be a a lot of fun right well rebecca uh, i'm gonna add the music in post because i've just had a lot of trouble with streamyard Um, uh, the music might put me off anyway yeah (laughs) exactly all right so here we go a summary of the issue written by ray Dr. Bada, a.k.a. Hunter's Moon, recalls his investigation on the strange killings and the mysterious S symbols scrawled all over the city. Scarlet Fascinera, the stained glass... Stained glass... Bar, uh, stained glass Scarlet uh, appears to have returned, although her death was documented years ago. Hunter's Moon tracks stained glass Scarlet to an old church, her original refuge, and is astounded to find a transcendent spectre goading him with Scarlet's past and her future motives. It's revealed the story, that story, the idea of stained glass Scarlet has gained traction and faith, and in doing so has sprouted a godling, one that appears before Hunter's Moon. Unable to defeat the seemingly unstoppable force, Hunter's Moon conjures up Konshu, the very god of the moon. And although Konshu is currently incarcerated on Asgard, uh, the astral projection proves too much for baby god, stained glass scarlet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the godling disappears, but as Conchu states, the story never ends if it's remembered. 
Hunter's Moon then confesses his regret for his past hatred towards Reese, uh, as he later recounts uh, the tale to her. Elsewhere, at Ravencroft Asylum, a red alert is sounded and panic escalates as it's revealed that Rutherford Winner has escaped dangerous killer and ex-colleague of Dr. Sturman. Well, patient, I would say. Oh, patient, I'll get it. Yes, that's fine. Right. Bugger. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> there you go, Looney's Plenty to digest, plenty to chat and talk through. Now, Rebecca, again, I always ask at the beginning, and I never said overall impressions, So, What did you make of this? Oh, really good. I mean, I didn't know what we were going to get going into it. And obviously, like, we all love uh, Scarlet, and it's weird to see her in this capacity, but it was done so well and so beautifully, and it makes a lot of sense. And now I feel like we can have her more, so I'm really happy with it. And uh, I just the, – the art is – and the art's great, and the colouring is slightly different when than when Mark's the main, the lead. So I really like that. Um, mm. Oh, yeah. well, 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 uh, well picked up there. Um, yeah, I, I love it too. It's it's a really nice, almost comfortable um, transition to having Hunter's Moon take over the mission. I thought, mm. and it, you know, here on that first page, it's it's reminiscent of one of the first pages of the early yeah. issues where we're introduced and, to Mr. Knight. Yeah, yeah it's uh, you see his different setup and I mean I guess it's a little bit jarring if you're not following Devil's Reign like where Mark is but yeah. I, they explain it yep. later in the comics so it kind of makes sense but you kind of go in either having read the recap or just go in mm-hmm. and uh, you're sort of I like that you don't have to see you know we got Reese really saying he was needed and, you, yep. you know, like, I mean, we didn't actually. No, we, you just enter where, you, where we are in the story. Yeah. And it, it even, I mean, as you mentioned, Rebecca, with Devil's Reign, it even references Moon Knight, uh, Devil's Reign Moon Knight, right? And that hasn't even really come out yet. Does it reference so... Devil's Reign Moon Oh, it does. Yeah, it oh, does. Ed- I wondered note. about yeah. that in the editor's note as well. And maybe it's like, a, mm. I just, I, I thought it was written weirdly. Like it would be like, it will be explained in Devil's Reign Moon Knight. Right. But I guess, I can't remember exactly how they were. Yeah, it just says, uh, yeah, because it says as seen in. And like I'd wonder yes. if like the dates moved a bit or because... I thought maybe they just jumped the gun and just they were talking about. I mean, but we're yeah, like a full what, three weeks ahead of Devil's Rain Moon Knight, so yeah, it's, I know it's a it's significant weird. jump, but yeah, um, yeah, the new new tiles and the, yeah, they. I mean, the, the, I mean, again, Rebecca, I'm just gawking at the the colours here. I love the the tinge of green that Rosenberg puts on the lighting. It just it's kind like of... one of those awful lawyer lamps, isn't it? That we all used to like our grandparents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and we've got here someone. What? Uh, oh, okay. Thank you, thank you, Russell. Uh, cheers. <laughs> Can't wait. We'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll have a look there soon. Uh, but yeah, the first overall impressions. Yeah, just really, really did enjoy it. Um, yeah. It's uh, we we kind of we got the tease with the stained glass scarlet insignia uh, yeah. on the walls, and wow, I just it really took me on a curve as to where um, is that even a saying as to how Jed McKay kind of introduces reintroduces us in, with with stained glass color. I yeah. just did not expect that at all. It was it was fantastic. No, although I did wonder how they were going to how he's going to bring her back because it's, you know, but mm. I yeah, it's good. It's interesting. Yeah, uh, so yes, it's called Scarlet, as mentioned. Um, yeah, shall we hit one of the the key moments? Oh, yeah, you know, any any of the key moments. Um okay. The first one, I mean, as as I mentioned, was Hunter Moon taking over Mark's mission. Mark's mission, and um, it was a really great intro to have him talking to. Now, I originally thought that was Detective Flint, um, but from memory, there was someone else who kind of looked like Flint. I remember from the earlier issues that wasn't him. Um, did you know by any chance? I didn't really pay attention. I thought he called him Flint. Yeah. Maybe I was just reading somebody else's feedback saying Flint. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, it, oh, no, he does. You're right. Sorry, he does. There we go. Mr. Flint. Uh, is just yeah. about the women who have suffocated. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I mean, we haven't seen him. I, I've been always wanting to see Flint back. Uh, yeah, so it's always although... nice when you get the uh, recurring cops yeah. or cop analogues in this case. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Since you said um, he's not regular police, not police anymore, not, not that kind of, not police anymore. Yeah. But, I mean, th that's a good way, I guess, to tie it in. And, like, he... We don't get too much into the investigation because it really it does focus around S Stained Glass Scarlet, but mm. uh, there there are people being suffocated. Um, women um, have been suffocated. Uh, and that's kind of brought Flint to, um, to Hunter's Moon to, to try and figure out what's going on. So we know that he's uh, um, sympathetic towards Moon Knight. So uh, his... I guess uh, impressions of Hunter's Moon would be a bit, a bit weird. Uh, I yeah, don't know yeah. I mean, thinks. I guess he's not. Yeah. He's not. Well, nobody. None of us know what to expect with uh, Hunter's Moon, so we're kind of with mm. him. But I do like that he's automatically in the dark suit. In the kind of, he literally is in the yeah. opposite of Mister Knight clothing. Like he's not wearing his uh, his Hunter's Moon outfit as the Fist of Conchu. He's still in a suit and tie with yes. a tie clip, which is. A lovely little. <laughs> that, uh, How cool! Is. Yeah, um, and, and as uh, as we kind of alluded to before, there's a reference to like another run, which is Devil's Reign issue one. We we get um, Capuccio's imp impression of mm -hmm. Moon Knight taking on the Thunderbolts. The Thunderbolts. Yeah. Uh, pretty, really, really cool as well. Uh, I I I don't know if I have a preference. I, I kind of like them both. Uh, Chichero oh, yeah, does nice a really to good. See them, yeah. Mm. Nice to yeah. see different artists do the same scene. Yeah. So, um, no, re really good. Uh, but, yeah, this, this thing with having Hunter's Moon at the mission already and, and really just taking the place of Mr. Knight, uh, I don't know, you immediately get the sense and you, you find out later on through the writing that he's a lot more of a, a good guy, so to speak. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. He's, I mean, the last time we did kind of see him, uh, well, mainly we saw him beating up Moon Knight, uh, he was very much the antagonist. Uh, he did help him against Zodiac, yep, but yep. now he seems to be fully, like fully, fully entrenched on, on the now, yeah, yeah, yeah on the good on side. Board. And I don't know about you, I mean, people have been loving that front cover, and I think people have been embracing Hunter's Moon straight away, just as comic book readers, and I, I certainly have. Yeah, I, I think everyone. I mean, it made so much sense. I think we've just taken to him straight away, and he it is like for all the parallels we've talked about before about. Um, you know, him being a doctor, whereas Mark was a fighter. Um, mm -hmm. him Muslim, Mark's Jewish. Like, you know, like all these things are like, it's just an interesting other way to take it. it. It's not a jarring addition, which I guess is how all comic additions should be, that they don't jar you, they add to the storytelling potential. And yeah. uh, and because we've done this, this quick turn of him not being antagonist all the time, like I'm sure they'll have other fights, um, like arguments, yeah. not necessarily fist fights, but... Um, yeah, it's just, it makes him very easy to sort of warm to. Mm, I mean, look at and some of the art again. A, a shout out to Capuccio's art. Uh, I enjoyed last issue. I know a lot of people were kind of missing Capuccio's art already um, after the one issue, um, and you know, taking nothing away from um, Federico Sabatini, mm -hmm. uh, but it is really nice to see some of these hero shots from uh, Capuccio again, and, and Hunter's Moon with that gold, the, the armaments just yeah. look so cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really do it love it's it. It's a so. really nice color combination. Yeah. Um, so yeah, doing well there. Uh, I mean, so here, as we see in the comic, uh, apologies again on the live stream on the video, we see Hunter's Moon d uh, straight away. Just going. I mean, we're in the first quarter of the comic. I'm looking at page six of or page yep. six of twenty three. Uh, he goes and he starts looking at um, the, these these really weird scrawlings. Rebecca, you had a little bit of a note here <laughs> about the stained glass scarlet. <laughs> I don't know if I should. I don't know if I. I think I said yeah. I'm not even going to say it here. But like, um, oh, okay. So no, I will because like I don't mind when people rag on me for this, and I did wear the t-shirt on purpose. But like uh, <laughs> that, like you know, we've been joking, or I've been joking, and I do mean joking about it. About how I think there's some sly nods here to the Moon Knight as Batman thing throughout the run. Yes, 
uh, I think we said it last time with having the clown and the um, decapitated head and the writing on the wall, very Joker style. Uh, mm -hmm. So then I was like going, if you're going to take this as a cumulative, then having someone whose symbol is an S on the wall that you're then told is uh, is a symbol of hope uh, just made me laugh as well. But like, uh, yeah. you know, I would be up for her being his Superman, being the Superman to his... Uh... <laughs> but that's that's all we're gonna say about the uh the honorable opposition as as they call them but like, i just thought it was another <laughs> fun little nod. Like, if you were gonna you could do it but i don't think any of them are done in mean spirit or like uh or no, sort of like i just think it's a it's a it's a just little sly little nod for people who are in on that kind of joke yeah yeah it was, it's pretty cool uh but i i like it i love how you kind of bring this sort of stuff in here rebecca I, I didn't see the association but i very much do see it now uh, yeah. it's like a, it's a spookier kind of you know yeah. i mean it's not Scully, the same he's... way and obviously certainly not in the same reason that it stands for hope uh mm -hmm. or not doesn't stand for hope but you know what i mean like uh people are like yeah i mean people are lighting candles to her as if she's a saint so there's something in mm. there you know yeah. Um, you see Chad's question. I mean, uh, yeah, it's coming up. Sorry, it's a bit okay. um, delayed here for me. I can't see it. Can you see it, Rebecca? Yeah, yeah. Do you think women being strangled is a call to hangman, the werewolf by night villain? Oh. Well, I don't know. If, if, the, if it is, you called it. I just... I, I didn't get that. But that's... Uh, it would be cool if it was. <laughs> I mean, like, it's a very distinct way of killing people. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, so what I, I mean, I don't know about you as well, Rebecca, the sense of hearing that, that first voice from Stained Glass Scarlet was, was quite eerie. It's very, yeah, it's very yeah. much more, more horror vibe. Um, yeah. as you mentioned, the, um, the, the candles on the ground, the scrawlings on the wall, uh, it's all kind of, uh, Re introduced via this kind of story of women being suffocated and stuff so it's very unsettling um, even the way it that is. they draw yeah. hunter's moon's shadow in the church is mm. kind of like the almost like that it, there's there's a lot of spooky as soon as you enter the church yeah yeah uh but again drawn really well i'm i'm loving how oh it's just uh, beautiful Capriccio's, yeah, doing it. Um, again, I, I'm a big fan of the art. I don't mind too much, like, the design of Hunter's Moon. He's got, like, two full moons, basically. Or you yeah. can even just interpret them as just circles on his forehead and on his, on his chest, which is similar to the, the Moon Knight costume in the TV show, which some yeah. people don't like the amount of, like, crescent moons on Moon Knight's costume. I mean, we get it a lot here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but that voice is very unsettling, yeah. um, with stained glass, glass scarlet. I was kind of, oh, geez, that, that name it's is a quite mouthful. quite hard to Rebecca. say, yeah. We, I just it is, isn't it? Scarlet now. <laughs> scarlet, yeah, let's just yeah. say scarlet. Uh, because I was wondering, like, surely this can't be her. What, what's the idea? Is, right, is I it just wondered like if a... it was somebody who'd taken inspiration from her or something like that. That but too. I, the more it felt yeah. ethereal, the more I was like, oh, we're, we're talking about, not ghosts, but something supernatural. Yeah, and I just, I was thinking, it can't be, that can't be the the fact really that it's her um we i got the sense as well that there were a lot of followers i mean that was kind of alluded to as well yeah um, her her story which was introduced uh before it gets kind of re uh, Rehashed, revisited yeah. <laughs> yeah in this and this thing coming up i mean uh again this next page great hunter's moon trying to um trying to beat wherever the voice is coming from uh he finds his crescent darts just stuck in uh like a, a plank of timber like um just on the wall uh and the yeah the floor just crumbles through uh and then oh my gosh with the next these colors oh i do not know what to say it's just, um the it's like a firework <laughs> it's like a firework it on, a, on a comic page it's yeah. like the color the color combinations that Rochelle Rosenberg decides to use is just so kind of really inspired each time and and you get the sense obviously we're working with stained glass mm -hmm. you know the, the whole theme of it yeah. Um, yeah but then by introducing those those hues of the red and the, and the crimson uh you know with the orange and the yellows 
yeah. just works really well. And Capuccio, again, like this must have been from the direction of Jed McKay about just the shattered glass everywhere yeah, all the time. Yeah. It just just gives off that really cool um, and Hunter vibe. Moon's and Moon's cloak still a little bit glowy. Even though oh yeah, I love that. So yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So he, I mean, yeah. And so in the in the story, he kind of falls through, and we get this recap again uh, of uh, there once was a girl who wanted to be a nun or an actress. Uh, she, uh, who tried the f- the former, but realised she was the latter, uh, a wife to a monster, the mother, uh, the mother to another monster, uh, a killer shot down in the same church where her husband and son died in gunfire decades apart. I mean, it's really a tragic story from her. It's um, so I, kind of I mean, lost... that's why we all love her, mm. isn't it? I mean, not oh because yeah, of that, but yeah, because you get so much of her background in so few issues, and you don't always get people mm. fleshed out like that, and. Um, Especially not women and um, as antagonists. And uh, it's just, I mean, I I think that's why she's a fan favorite. And it's always been a case of like, how do you get her back now? And this is such Mm. a great way of doing it within some of the themes that um, Jed's playing with with the rest of the comic. Yeah. Um, And I, I just love the fact that she, I mean, as we mentioned, I mean, this is one of the other key moments. It's a. The little, the little godling. Has mm-hmm. she just become the legend? Has taken on a life of its own, literally. Yeah. And it's not. I mean, you can't even really say it, it's literally Scarlet Fascinera. It's her story, and yeah. it's a, a combination of her and I guess all the other people who have that same kind of faith in what she's doing. Yeah. Uh, she's become this legend, which I think is awesome. And and later on, I can't remember the the terminology, but uh, it's a bit where i'm just gonna fast forward a bit here on the in the images yeah it's this one where she's just a red hood yeah and oh so cool and um they give me life and i give them vengeance so she becomes like a almost a spirit of vengeance herself yeah um and i i don't know what the terminal uh it's just beautiful yeah it is yeah but it just makes it look so scary like we don't even see her face yeah we know it's the next page is again oh just, yeah like the, just the art in bonkers this is insane oh. like if we had yeah. to have a standing I, artist mm. just to get the art for this issue would have been worth it oh like yeah last yeah. month to get the uh this but yes absolutely yeah. absolutely i would have waited yeah. um one or two i mean even two issues or whatever i would yeah. have waited more for this this is this is great and you can see where the time has gone into yeah uh and it's just just doing Absolutely all the little phenomenal. triangles of the glass and like yeah it pays off as well it it's does, and it's really of... good and you get like um hunter's moon making his kind of confession mhm yes yes and, which uh, is uh... and also standing up to and saying like i can change what well, can't why can't you yes uh can add but i love it he just can a story i mean yeah. like he she's more than just like a person she's the, this abstract now which uh is, is really well defined in the art of yeah. just this huge floating like she's gi- ginormous this huge floating red yeah. cloak uh so this is not the star- scarlet fascinera that we know or stained glass scarlet that we know before uh and i i have to say for me i mean one of the the massive standout apart from jen mckay's um great idea for this story uh was yeah. definitely the art the art was a huge oh, standout um, for this yeah so um we get later there we go um the actual the final kind of vision of, yeah. of her and yeah it's did you wake up did you wake up yesterday rebecca expecting <laughs> no. to see stained glass scarlet as a faceless prismatic golden <laughs> no but i love it it's fantastic, isn't it? And the great. Now, I love the scale because, um, you know, obviously she's, she's attained a different kind of tier yeah. of um, of existence. Uh, but the other key point that comes up is how does Hunter's Moon counter this? Well, actually, first in this uh, this page, he actually um, kneels before her. He yeah. is yeah. very much like. Uh, I'm not going to go against you. It's almost like, you know, I understand where you're coming from. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, so he's kind of like res- giving her respect for what she's doing, but at the same time, uh, you know, he, he conjures yeah. up. He's probably the, also the K-Man. Conshu to be... Uh, oh, that, that actually, no, 
you're right. Yeah, that's probably what he's doing as well. Well, you know, he's uh, being but... semi-respectful in doing it. But, you know. Yeah, I think so. But actually, I I think probably what you're saying as well, he's doing a bit bit of both, a bit of that yeah. as well, just kind of secretly, you know, okay, man, where are you? Yeah. Uh, this but this is one of the oh. all-timer splash pages. I, I, I mean, every saying time is, oh. I look at it, there's like a new, a new thing, and I'm just picking up the line of Moon Knights. <laughs> uh, me <laughs> too, as well. Pyramids, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't notice that before as well. I was just looking at Stained Glass Scarlet and Conchu because we yeah. see. I mean, we we were teased with Conchu by Capuccio a couple of issues ago, and he tweeted it as well, which got everyone excited, having yeah. that kind of slight silhouette. And now we see him in full glory. And I love that up the against, inset yeah. panels are shaped like a bit of stained glass as well. Yes. Yeah, it's it's yeah. very well inspired, like layouts. You just get these shards, and it's almost as if they're kind of. They are like flying in midair and and flipping, um, but you see yeah. reflections of. But like of, that uh, bit of hundreds. Hunter's Moon is a little triangle yeah. as well, you know, that his his view on it all. But in the top corner, you've got an ankh and the church oh, yeah. uh, architecture. Yes. Uh, it's just gorgeous. So Conchu has come to to fight on his behalf. Yeah, and I guess he's got the experience and everything to to kind of counter well, godlings. You no, know, Hunter's Moon so says does... he's the greatest god of the great gods. Yeah, yeah, okay. that was like <laughs> I was looking at that. It's like wow, he wow, really he does really love. Wow, he really drunk the Kool Aid. Yeah, no. he did. Yeah, he really Not does get behind. Not saying he isn't the greatest god of the great gods, but you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, again, a glorious shot of uh, of Conchu there as well, and again, the scale uh, is ju- it just kind of gives you that grand grandness. Yeah, uh, I mean, it is of, quite of, of interesting like... because, like, when he the, the last thing he says before Greatest God is that he's defender of those who travel at night, which seemingly yeah. is what Scarlet's been doing. So she, well, she she has, yeah, hasn't she? Right. Like that... So like, they're all on the yep. same mission, just different ways of doing it. Yeah, which I find a very. Um, yeah, it's an interesting parallel between yeah. Conchu and what Scarlet is tr- is trying to do, or, or yeah. the legend of Scarlet is. Uh, we see towards the end that it, it doesn't go away. I mean, there are still people who believe, and w- yep, when yep. they do, as as Conchu said, that the story doesn't die, then Scarlet won't die. Um, so that was yeah, that was quite interesting. Um, and and all along the way here as well. Again, as I mentioned, we're we're gaining more sympathy for Hunter's Moon. Um, yeah, I it was that when he did say the greatest god of gods. For me, it was kind of like, oh, as you said, a bit too much of the Kool Aid. The guy's kind of really invested a bit too much. He's a, um, it's a true you know, believer, he's... and that's good. Yeah, we're not used yeah. to that. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, exactly. Even when he was fighting, um, while well, he was throwing those crescent darts at yeah. Stained Glass Scarlet, he was just showing how devout he was yeah. uh, and you don't get it's it's such a different thing to compare him to say how moon knight would have tackled yeah, it as well yeah. um he would be devoid of you know talking about conchu or he would he wouldn't i don't think even have conjured i conjured can't up even imagine conchu. it which is like why it's such a great interlude why mark's in jail mm, it is he would have it's... been so compromised by seeing scarlet like this so it would be interesting yes yeah, the, the relationship that he had yeah. with her, that kind of, as Doug Mensch put this ESP that they both shared together. Yeah. Um, but we see a titanic battle between Conchu yeah. and, and Scarlet. And Conchu which is, is still pretty... in prison, so this is the astral projection of him. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it's not. I'm not entirely sure how he did it. We get some really kind of fancy, you know, arty ways. Um, he kind of goes close towards Scarlet and as Hunter's Moon crashes through yet another kind of stained glass, um, I, I think that, and, and, and Conchie's saying uh, we can be hurt, which he is talking about gods, basically. Yeah, he's saying and, they, so I, they I, can't kill Scarlet. each other, but we can reduce our power, we can be banished, blah, blah, blah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, um, yeah. And then we switch, switch scenes. Yeah, and, and so that was pretty good. Cool. I mean, we don't, you know, there's no glorious demise of stained glass scarlet she yep. it's just the shot of hunter's moon crashing through the window and conchu just admitting that yeah uh, i can beat you and we can kind of hurt you uh but i like this little exchange i thought this was a really yeah cool thing to just confirm well it's just the, he's the learned turn, something from his experiences yeah. and you know 
she's not entirely ready to forgive him. But at least they're talking. Uh, I mean, yeah. They're talking. You know, that's the, that's... I think sometimes we brush these things off too quickly. And this is a deep like issue. Like he attacked her and her friends. And oh, he wanted he to kill a, her, yeah. And he has, a, he has a big issue with vampires. So it's not all on her. Like no. it's not all her. You know, he also has to get over. He has a lot to heal from that. So, but it's just, it's interesting that they make the first step. But they, you know, we're not expected to believe they're best pals now. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I do. Yeah, I just enjoy the. Uh, what is it? The, the word, not the modesty, but just how hubris. Hunter's Moon is just willing, the hubris. He's just willing to just, you know, admit admit his yeah. mistakes. Um, I really, kind of like really trying to. I mean, like, you, we're just yeah. not used to seeing male characters like this. We were mm. not like who you know. We used to self deprecation and stuff, but not ones who actually like this quickly, you know, accept that they may have been wrong about something and just sort of say, oh, I'm sorry. And then, and also realize that this probably isn't the end of everything, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to throw it to you, Rebecca, as well. What would you think uh, if, say, you know, we know it's on the front cover of of Devil's Reign, Moon Knight, say that Mark is incarcerated. How would you feel if for, like, the next month or the year or whatever um we we basically have hunter's moon as moon knight if that was the way um, that I think Jed is given thinking. the way it's been set up i'd be okay with that i mean i'd want to know what mark's you know we're always going to want to know what mark's doing and like you've got to remember i'm going through this with iron fist at the moment um mm, but yeah. i think if if the story's good then and like i said this is an additive change uh it's not like uh Mark won't be Moon Knight when he comes out again. It's just so this we have Hunter's Moon. Yeah, I I think I jokingly said they should just change the title to Hunter's Moon for a few issues. Uh, yeah. Like get let yeah. us really know him. But also, I mean, like I don't. I mean, I'm fairly sure that's not going to happen. So I'm looking forward to them being a team more. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, to answer the question that I asked as well, I wouldn't yeah. mind as well. I mean, I, I'm I'm just thinking of also. The man without, you know, how when Black Panther took over Daredevil's role, and mm-hmm. uh, albeit, albeit and he Iron wasn't, or Fist. even, and Iron Fist, or yeah. or even more recently, how Elektra is now yeah, like yeah. Daredevil. Well, they've done um, two Daredevils, so it's kind of the same have, thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't be adverse to say if Mark Spector was out of the picture for a while. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind yeah. actually. Um, just because of the strength of how Jed McKay's written Hunter's Moon, how he's slowly introduced him to the readers, and um, yeah, he's he's a force to be reckoned with, and I think he's uh, he's pretty cool. Who was um a shout out and apologies, I can't remember which loony, but Rebecca, I don't know if you saw on the group or it was in Discord about Batter, the the word Batter. I don't know if some loonies know that is actually. Is that Egyptian? I don't think, sorry. Is it... I'm sure oh, okay. I it's a tra- it, but I don't remember what it was. Right, uh, Bada B A D R is actually, I think, Egyptian for something about the moon. Okay. Um, so it sense. is. A, it's a yeah direct translation. So that's uh, that's pretty cool as well. Uh, so you know, Jed McKay, obviously doing his homework over there. Uh, and towards the end of this page, I mean, we're we're almost at the end of this issue uh, again. Just a. a confirmation again that there is someone out there you know following yep. the superman lo- the superman symbol yep. rebecca yep. So. <laughs> I, hope. I love krypton <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I've, no, I've, just, I've, just... I've, I've warped you now <laughs> <laughs> oh, just fine, like it i really... mean it's obviously not but it is a nice nod to it i just like i like these i like drawing being able to draw parallels with that without feeling the weight of that whole um Mm-hmm. The sort of clickbait articles, because I think yeah. with all street level characters, you can draw these. You should be able to draw parallels between the other street level characters from whatever company. And um, but it has this. I mean, it's become a joke because it's got this weight to it, and it's such a shame if it stops us being able to discuss it. But I do appreciate yeah. that I keep raising it. So I, like, you know, like I don't mean it to upset anyone or anything. I just think it's a really interesting that somebody's not shied away from it. And I don't think he's mm-hmm. doing it tactically. I just think it's just these are interesting little Easter eggs almost. You know, the stories yeah. all make sense without any of that. 
So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're just like little playful. Yeah, kind of, I just find um, it hard not to to think of them. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's similar to an extent of say, if I'm reading like one of the really old comics from the seventies or eighties, and you know that they they're putting in the faces of creators. Mm-hmm. Like in these like background characters, they're just like little in things that the, yeah, the like artist I was reading, or the writer um, does. I was reading some Carl yeah. Rayner once, and there's straight up issues where he's living next to Doctor Strange, and I was just like, <laughs> really? I, I don't understand. Like, I'm reading a DC comic, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so like there's a lot of like uh, it's it feels nice because it feels like there's no big walls, but like you're not really, you know. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that's good. Um, and the last page here, the the epilogue, the the final key point I had here, Rebecca, was of course Rutherford Winner. Yeah. Um, now this, I think, we, Ravencroft. Da, da, da. Yeah, I, I think. I mean, we were discussing him all the way back before just the issues uh, before Jed McKay's run started, right? Or I can't yes. remember. Well, we're I talking about so. with, Very with, early with Jed. On, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there was um, a, a want, I guess, of, of bringing in characters, the, the question of whether the series would include characters from the greater Marvel Universe, and I think I think Jed mentioned, I think it was him. And he said, d- all, all, all writers like reusing their creations, so, you know. Yes, you yeah. Know, so yeah. It's, uh, it's not too much of a spot. And also, um, Dr. Sturman, like I said, is also his psychiatrist. So. Yeah. Oh, that that was it. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. We were we were all speculating because like Jed McKay is on the run. What who's he yeah, going to yeah. use, introduce, and yeah, Rutherford winner. So, uh, this introduces it. Uh, you know, it teases some things to come. The next arc. Uh, do you know much of him? I mean, I read Rebecca, the I, I read Daughter of the Dragon, yeah, so I, I yeah. probably know as much as anyone else. But like, it was I read it when it came out. So, what was like two thousand eighteen? Oh, okay. So a little while ago. He's um. Basically, Hydra did this Project Pygmalion on him, which is mm-hmm. like uh, forced, like fake memories and whatever. And he's doing that. And then Shield used him kind of in the same way, all to carry out assassinations. Daughter of the Dragon right. kind of free him. He sets. It's interesting because he talks about developing a story. So he like lures them to the end, and he's like, "Oh, this is my big." villain monologue and then you kill me and that's how the story plays out but they don't they right. help him and get him help uh, psychiatric help and then right. he comes back the next issue and saves them when they've been because oh. they go after the person that that was um directing him or whatever and so then yeah. they go back and and help him uh, he goes back and saves them from this uh mindscape they've kind of been trapped in and um then he goes into like psychiatric care, so to to try and like get rid of the programming and stuff. Okay. So it's interesting. Yeah, it's I mean... another one that's very interested in stories. So um, mm. I don't, I think that's probably a Jed theme, and we're seeing it play out in various different ways. But uh, yeah, it's you know why not? I'm I'm up for more. Oh, we've uh, we've got so much to chat with Jed. A yeah. uh, little. Uh, and it's only a three to... issue run, the Daughter of the Dragon, so. Um, okay, you know. Anyone, okay, well, well worth checking out. Marvel yeah. Unlimited, so yeah. Yeah, uh, Marvel Unlimited for sure. I read. I, I just quickly did a, a Rutherford winner. Um, what is it? Run, run, search. check a check yeah. on. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> that's it, Rebecca. Search. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. Um, on Wiki, and yeah, just apparently he he killed a lot of people. Like he's a little yeah. bit scary as well. Apparently, so um, yeah. should be interesting. He doesn't he look. I mean, he. He looks pretty normal. Oh, yeah. He's got a bit of scar he looks down pretty his normal. Chin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see where it goes, and I cannot wait. Uh, lo- loony listeners, uh, we'll be having Jed on very soon again. Yeah. Uh, returning guest, uh, I want to say friend of the show, Rebecca. Honorary high priest. Honorary high priest. I can't wait. He could be a high yeah. priest of Scarlet. Why not? You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He could be one of those. Um <laughs> But I can't wait. Um, so Rebe- Rebecca and I will be uh will be chatting, chewing the chewing the breeze, chatting breeze, chewing the breeze, chewing the fat, shooting the breeze with Jed McKay very soon. So I'll I'll put up a post. Uh, if you have any questions yeah, or if you like questions. to know aren't anything, too embarrassing, please. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll. Embarrassing, like how do you pronounce Tigra? 
Oh yeah, yeah. We'll doctor. We'll doctor. Oh, we'll add that one in, Rebecca. We have to. <laughs> you can um, but, ask that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but everything else is is um will be doctored. Uh, just a few other comments here. I was uh, again, Rebecca. I was having some troubles while we were going through the comics, so I didn't see everyone's comments. I just wanted to shoot back. Uh, Chad did say the halo on Scarlet is it is a great touch. It looks really Beautiful. cool. Beautiful. Um, and very Christian, and, so it works. So. Mm, yes, I wonder if it. I'd just love to know if it, if it, that is a McKay instruction or if it's something inspired by Capuccio. Just mm-hmm. but anyway, it works. Whoever came up with it, that's great. Um, and yeah, Chad mentions um, he agrees that someone else. I don't. I'll put it up anyway. Cause mm. He just says I forgot her name. But thank you to the loony again, uh, who pointed out about Doctor. Yeah. Oh, it was Olivia. A big shout out to Olivia. Thank you, Olivia, Olivia. the loony. Thank you, Olivia, um, for letting us know about the word "better." Very cool as well, and uh, and Russell Tomes of Evil, friends of the show, for like collective member. I would love a Hunter's Moon, yeah, for sure. I knew Russell Absolutely. would be up for that. I, I somehow oh. knew. He's all. He's I all can't into think of many this... people who wouldn't, but I, I knew Russell would be. He likes new characters. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. Uh, Rebecca, any other? notes of yours that you wanted to say i'm just I'm having a little squiz. let's have a look i yeah uh, just under themes probably so this whole mm-hmm. thing about stories and mythology and gods and belief it's a really interesting like it's something i'm fascinated by like the idea that you know it's, there's a lot of books that sort of cover that like if you believe in something enough it takes on that kind of godlike stance um Mm-hmm. I think Loki, Agent of Asgard's kind of about it. So anyone interested in that theme, that's my recommendation read. Um, but also I thought it was very interesting here that we do have Bada, who's mid-Muslim, Scarlet, clearly Christian, and Mark, Jewish. So like we have some yeah. interesting like um, commonalities of like uh, same gods, different gods. Also we're using the Egyptian pantheon as well. Uh, stained glass Scarlet, the design looks like there's some sort of um southeast asian design work there with the forearms mm-hmm. uh or asia yeah yeah um You're right yeah but also like i wonder if all of those things together are playing into there is a commonality in faith and belief and gods and it doesn't matter which one you are but um or which ones you believe in as long as you believe in something and the story's there and i wonder if we're going to have zodiac being like the the fourth square of that the sort of uh i guess uh believer in chaos almost the sort of like the the atheist in amongst that mm. that uh trio of uh believers um but it's interesting that like um what's his name uh, Rutherford Winner is somebody who was made to believe a story, then had to regain his own personal story, and and also thinks in terms of the story. So I, it's it's clearly something that Jed's interested in because I <laughs> don't have an answer from that, but I just I I love it as well. So that's that's fascinating, and I think Rebecca, you couldn't have said it any better. That that's a really awesome way to kind of look at it and I, oh, yeah I, I, you're getting me excited again about like you know about just the intricacies of this writing it's awesome like yeah like, this I whole really... thing about faith and 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 how yeah absolutely and i love this idea of zodiac just running around there a little bit of a loose cannon but him him being kind of associated with this kind of idea of the high concept of faith and how there's that commonality between the you, you, you couldn't have said it any better. Rebecca. I'm really That's interested awesome. to see where that goes because I can't see mm. now if he's the baddie for this initial thing, how it won't yep. play into it. Like it almost has to. Yeah. So I'm more this excited. Is, this now. is something. Yeah. We should be asking Jed, and I think. Yeah, and be... he'll say I can't tell you, but we can definitely. Yeah, I know, it, but like, you know, like we can press him on influences and things like that. So. I think he would be secretly just chuffed that yeah. you know you you would be gleaning this from his writing, and that's that's great. Um, but yeah, uh, look, there's not much else references apart from the Devil's Reign, as you said, and Rutherford Winner. I mean, of course, Stained Glass Scarlet from the Mensch Run. I mean, if you don't know who she is, and you're a relatively uh, new Moon Knight fan. Um, Definitely check out uh, Volume One: Stained Glass, Scarlet Appearances. I think from memory. Oh my gosh, it's There's it's really, many. yeah. Is she thirteen or fourteen? I think is is her first um, appearance. I can't remember. And then she comes back again. Yeah. Uh, 
really, and, and she she actually returns in Mark Spector Moon Knight in the Scarlet Redemption, a big arc by J M D Mateus. Uh, you'll get to kind of know what kind of character she is. Um, so yeah, just a little shout out to all the newer fans out there who may not know Sc- yeah. Stained Glass Scarlet. She's definitely not a godling. Um, this is really like new stuff for for yeah. long time fans uh but yeah very very interesting and i just again love how jed plays with the it's really uh, clever to have her come against hunter's moon who doesn't know her so she does have to tell her story like yeah they're like because if she's going against mark like why would she be saying that he knows all of that so it's a very clever sort of putting them together to to get that so it doesn't feel like awkward to get the exposition Oh yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, and yeah, so uh, highly recommend it. Um, I'm going to shout out to Russell. Russell, you've got to do a stained glass scarlet. <laughs> yeah, <you laughs> I'm gonna, on times of evil, do a stain. I mean, is she a villain? Well, I was going to do it with. Her. I was going to do it with Russell, and then I think ah. uh, Con Connishu took my place, and then they never ah. managed to get a time, or they did it, or and I switched to doing. Um, Randall Specter because there wasn't yes. a, yeah I thought I thought I thought he'd done it done it you did it with someone else because uh, Connor she, you couldn't make it uh, but yeah I yeah. switched to Randall because no one wanted to do Randall and I love him so Randall is is awesome as well do you think yeah. we'll get him in the show I mean I'm still hoping somehow I I always hope I always hope that someone yeah. will come and do a better story than him being like a woman yeah. abuser who kills people. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> There's got to be some sort of like, it's such a great character, but I think in this, you know, like, so. Yeah. Yeah, go uh, to Tomes of Evil on Stained Glass Scarlet. I absolutely, even said it absolutely. Without stumbling that time. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely worth it. Again, for the new listeners, uh, long-time fans would, yeah. I'd, I'd love to, I mean, we'll, we'll get to some feedback as well about everyone's thoughts on this. I ha- I just copy and pasted them, Rebecca, into the prompt sheet. I haven't read yeah, them, so yeah. I can't wait to, to hear. Um, as well, just quickly here, Chad, uh, Jed needs to give us a headcount on all the gods he brings to our plane, absolutely. Yep. Uh, R- Russell wants Resurrection War, such an awesome, awesome arc. I really love that. Actually, um, Rebecca, as much as I love doing High Strangers with you, because that was such a bonkers thing, yeah. I, w- I would have loved to have done Resurrection War yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> with you as well. High Strangers um, was yes. very fun. Though. We have time. That was fun. We'll it fit was... it in sometime after the TV we'll... show. We'll go do whatever yeah, yeah, we want. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and, yes, yeah, sorry. Thank you, Russell. You, yep, absolutely you did. I, I know that you did all the, the main Mooney villains. I, I just wasn't sure whether... Yeah, we uh, counted Scott... Stained Glass. Yeah, we fantastic. Um, All right. I guess without any other notes, Rebecca, what we get? Let's go to Connishu's rating system. What did you give this out of ten? Nine. Woohoo! That is awesome. A full moon. Nine out of ten. Um, it, uh, reasons, Rebecca. Just a uh, you know, a couple of key key points. Why? I, just think it was, I think it was very clever and it was beautiful <laughs> and it brought back one of the characters I love in a way that made sense and excites me for the future. Yeah. Yes, I absolutely agree. I gave it a nine as well, a big full moon, uh, and it was just a combination of everything. As you said, the sand glass, scarlet, the art, it was beautiful, really. Just the art and the colours, oh my gosh, brilliant. Again, every time I, I open up a Moon Knight comic and I come across one of those splash pages, I just, I in the back of my it mind, it's like... I that one of her, me and, too. her and, and Konshu. Oh my God, he needs to make a print so badly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I but I, I him and say please make that a print because like well, I just I'm get, never gonna well, have I money get, to buy original pages. Well, me, me too as well. But I always have in the back of my head. I've just got to tweet Alessandro Capuccio again and ask when he's going to release his artwork because, <laughs> my gosh, every few issues is just like it's like yeah, I want that one. I yeah, want that yeah. one. I want no, that one. This is the one so, I want. Scarlet yeah. and consume. So, a nine out of ten. So that gives you an average of nine out of ten. Looney listeners, go it. read it. Yeah, we liked it. It was, oh my gosh, it was really cool. Uh, and, it, and it paves the way for the next arc with Rutherford Winner. Um, Untested Waters. I can't wait. Can't wait to, to yeah, see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So, do you want to do Russell's feedback first? Because it's in Messenger for you. Yes. And okay, then I yeah, will, sure. And then we'll, yeah, just so we don't forget it. Cause... Yeah, absolutely. So... Um, let me just, cause you know, raise all about this visual thing as well. Let's go into Nightlines, everybody. Here we are. 
Um, I've and got so, team tune in my head. <laughs> so I'm going to read uh, Russell's first, and Russell is via Messenger. Thank you, Russell. I was like, whilst we were chatting, I was looking all throughout all the different mail accounts I had Russell. I couldn't find it. And then, yeah, okay, I'll just check Messenger. There it is. Uh, so Russell says, uh, absolutely mind-blowing. This is not what I expected at all. The art continues to enamor me, especially how Alessandro draws Hunter's Moon. 100%, Russell. Uh, it was cool seeing Flint. Yeah, me too. And oh my God, Stained Glass Scarlet has ascended. Uh, she's almost She almost becomes this Lovecraftian horror and I dot love dot it dot. <laughs> Her new design is amazing. I love the faith measuring contest. Yep, between the two and Big Daddy Conchu coming in to finish it. Or did he? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think he did. But like, it was just like, let's not linger on the details. That yeah. sort of stuff. Uh, this was a standout, standalone issue. And I loved it. We'll have to reread it as I read it in a rush. But I love it so much. Five out of five. 10 out of 10, that's a big fuck-off moon, uh, Russell, if ever I saw one. Thank you very much, oh, Russell, for you. that. Fantastic. Um, Rebecca, are, are yep. the others just as enamoured? Yeah, well, let's have a look. So I've got Chaz <laughs> from Facebook group. Uh, well, mm -hmm. I'm happy Mark didn't have to see her like this. Sad as it may be, getting her story was important to me, and getting that melee between her and Conchie was quite the money shot. Jed sure loves showing off gods in his book, and he knows how to hype it up. Is this another chorus ability under Conju? Uh, Alessandra and Rochelle really had their work cut out with the titans and the shadow light they project. That little zinger at the end of Raven, uh, Ravencroft was a nice touch for Dorse the Dragon, but I'm wondering what prompted a catatonic terrorist to spring into action. 9.5 9 out of 10 votive candles. Yes, I, yeah. I, I'm I very excited to see what, the, what prompted that uh, escape from Ravencroft. Yeah. Uh, especially as we'll hopefully have the parallel of Mark escaping from jail at, at the same time. Yes. I mean, does it have anything to do with Wilson Fisk, potentially, having I mean, like, released Rutherford? We literally, so that's, the only yeah. connections we know he has are Hydra, S.H.I.E.L.D., not on good terms with neither, and Daughter of the Dragon, mm -hmm. who he is on good terms with, but doesn't really yeah. know anyone else. Like, um, it's these two yeah. kids that sort of got in touch with him about, about Misty and Colleen. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we should see. Um, and also as well, just a little shout out, the Chorus of Ordination. Yeah, is this is an ability that Mark hasn't got, that yeah, Hunter's Moon yeah, has. Yeah, he to, can to, like, get to, conchu there, yeah. Um, conchu, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, thank you, yeah, thank you, Chad, for that. Um, very nice thoughts there, and obviously a winner-winner chicken dinner for his nine and, nine and a half out of ten. Uh, Mario Di G uh, Giacomo, one of the Petrunis, one of the beloved Petrunis, says... Well, that's not what I expected. Sure, I knew without reading that this would be a story about faith, given that both Moon and Scarlet are zealots of one sort or another, but I would not have expected that would get stained glass Scarlet becomes a living urban myth. Uh, as I'm not a, well, as I'm not as huge a fan of the older material as some, I can treat the story dispassionately, and it is quite interesting, although a bit open-ended. And as usual, Alessandro Capuccio kills it on the art side. Uh, it also it's also great seeing former detective Flint again. He may not be a policeman anymore, but he's still a cop, and you just know that bit about the dead woman will come up again. Yes, absolutely. That just is dropped yeah, and forgotten, yeah, yeah. basically. Uh, we also get a bit deeper into the characters of Bada and Reese. I like that she doesn't give him, uh, she doesn't forgive him immediately, even though his re his regret seems genuine. I also like that, unlike Mark, he takes his mask off during downtimes. Yeah. That's an yeah, interesting. That's, that was an yeah. interesting observation. Yeah. Again, differences between the two. Yeah. Uh, and finally, a tease at the end. The almost glass Taipei line tells me is probably Rutherford Winner. Well, it, it says it on the plaque. Um, I, I felt Jez. so mean for pointing that out, Mario. <laughs> like, oh, did you? Yeah, 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 I did. And he was like, oh, what is it? And I'm like, I was so impressed he got it from the text that, like, yeah, uh, you know, like, fantastic, all, all Mario. Oh, my God. For that. But yeah, like, I yeah. Had to zoom in on the plate and went, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, from Jed's Daughter of the Dragon Mini, who happens to share Mark's therapist. Cool. Uh, all in all, I'd give this a three-quarter moon. Yep. I'm just a little disappointed we didn't get uh, classic Scarlet because I love her retro design. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, but I can live with this. It's interesting to compare Mr. Knight's meeting room with Mr. Moon's. Both use Egyptian iconography, but Mark keeps it subtle in the background while Bader rather calls attention to it with his lighting. Uh you know, consistent with the personality, right? Uh, a nice character bit. 
Also, nice shout out to Mark's brief appearance in Devil's Reign number one. The framing is quite similar. Yeah. Yeah, uh, as we mentioned. Yeah, the his uh, the feedback just made me think. Like you know, we're talking about dead women, and I what I was just saying about Randall. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of dead women in his history. But like, there is. My do God. not expect yeah. him to show up. So um, <laughs> then uh, we've got feedback from John Shabel, I think. Sorry, pronunciation again. Uh, oh my, that epilogue probably means more zodiac problems for moon knight also dr sturman is probably in big trouble i mean the last we saw her, she was in big trouble so uh yes yeah i wonder i wonder what's happening there and mm-hmm. uh yeah um i mean who knows what i mean i it's, i am interested i know um op on discord is like trying to work out what the um uh, chronology of all this is like with the Devil's Reign one, oh, Devil's Reign four, what? and where oh, we yeah. are in all of that. Um, but yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, and yeah, how long we're left waiting to hear what's happened with Doctor Sturman. Um, yeah, if it, I mean she's in big trouble. It seems like she's quite like um... all around. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But also, just while we're talking about it, uh, Mark appears in Devil's Reign four this week. But if you don't want yeah. to buy it, yeah, every. His entire appearance is in the preview pages. So if you're okay, if you just want to read it this week. Go look up preview pages for Devil's Drain Four, and that's all you need to know about what Mark's doing in prison. I, I love how he's still like Mark. I mean, Moon Knight Mark is still included, like in the greater Devil's Drain. Yeah, Rain. I just and love I also how like he's, yeah. how he's done the same mask as he had in the Lemire run in the Asylum. Mm. Yeah, like yeah. The, uh, I'll just bandage my face and like do it, you know. So that's pretty Very, cool. Um, it's a nice little bit. That's yeah. a nice little touch. So, yes, uh, a big shout out as well. I want to give it um, to John Shable. Uh, he shared his cosplay costume, which was like two years in the making. Uh, phenomenal! Uh, so if you incredible. If you haven't seen it, Loonies, and you're in the Facebook group or you're not in the group, join the group and go check out John's uh, John Shable's uh, costume. So well done, John. It, it's it's. Yeah, I just flabbergasted. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, another quick little message here from Marley Schaefer. The art gets better and better every issue, and I cannot agree with you more. Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, I remember issue one. I was a little critical of Capuccio. Sometimes you have uh, to settle into a new artist's style, mm. and he was new to us, and like I knew yeah. I didn't hate it, and I knew I liked it. I just didn't know how much I'd grow to love it. And... and Pairing him with Rochelle and those oh. incredible colours. I mean, they literally, oh, it's, it's, it's perfect. It's just, I mean, like, yeah. I can't imagine anyone else, like, even, say, you know, my beloved Greg Smallwood, I can't imagine him pulling this off and it feeling the mm. same. Because there's a certain yeah. sort of uh, kinetic energy to this run. Um, yeah. That is, it, I'm just really enjoying it. And, uh, yeah, so... Next yeah. feedback. Hey. I've got Lena. Mm-hmm. Let's see what Lena thinks of Scarlet. Uh, yes. All I can say is, wow. Okay, I lied. I have more to say. Uh, I've been a fan <laughs> of Stained Glass Scarlet ever since I read her first appearance, which was a masterpiece by Munch and Sinkevich. Uh, and while I would have liked to see Ms. Fascinera again, I found this new take on the character to be unexpected and very fascinating. I loved the dialogue between Scarlet and Hunter's Moon and the story battle between her and Conch was amazing. I believe I spied the MCU Moon Knight amongst the chorus of fists. Oh, well, there's another one to go back and look at. So that's yeah. like, that's everyone's homework for this week. Go look at the uh, <laughs> chorus of what did the chorus of what's it called? That, I ordination. Mean, that's what it is. The, the chorus of ordination. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what, yeah. Who they all are. Uh, oh, you're not going to be able to work out all the art, but like guess a few of them. Uh, the art was superb, especially the design of this new version of Scarlet. I think this may be my favourite issue of this volume yet, which is saying something because I haven't disliked any of them. So yes, I think everyone's liked it so far, right? Mm-hmm. A lot writing yeah, on absolutely. Noel. <laughs> a lot writing on Noel. I mean, wait, let's have a listen to what Noel has to say. Uh, Noel uh, wrote in, a uh, host of the absolutely fantastic new podcast trapped in the world the howard the duck podcast i just said if you haven't checked it out check it out please Definitely do, do. Uh, oh he's he's so funny um he and russell uh, mm. anyway let's hear what noel has to say about this issue i haven't heard it as well 
Hey guys, it's Noel Tate. I'm going to give you my little two cents about the new issue of Moon Knight, number eight. Um, overall, I think it's a pretty cool issue. I'm really yep. digging the art. I'm He's just, I say it every time, he's getting better and better. And this time, there's a lot of sort of Declan Shelby vibes happening with this one. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is or why it is, but there's something I'm just getting that kind of vibe. Maybe it's because as we get into the story, um, Dr. Basher is calling himself Dr. Moon, which I think is pretty cool. It's funny that he's wearing the suit, the Mr. Knight suit, and he's uh, talking to our ex-detective, Flint, about the Scarlet Fesnera situation. Um, And Flint really looks like Declan Shelby drew him. And I don't know if Alexandru is perhaps referencing some of those comics, but just the couple panels there where they're talking in the Midnight Mission look very Declan Shelby to me. But um, it's a pretty neat story as it goes with Hunter Moon going to hunt down what's happening with um, Stained Glass Scarlet. I'm not exactly sure what she is now. This all seems very... Maybe I missed something, but this seems very Grant Morrison, like when stories become reality and stories are what make the world go round and therefore comic books are real or whatever. Um, But it is pretty cool as a story, and I like the look of this minor god of stained glass scarlet or whatever she is. Um, It's all a little psychedelic, and of course, since it is a little psychedelic, Introducing Kanshu to the fight was pretty neat. And the to re, kind of redesign, I guess, I don't know if this was how Kanshu looked in Age of Kanshu, but it looks awesome. And the rendering of it looks really cool. And the fight looks cool. And the little um, wrapping up the story with Dr. Basher talking to um, Reese and apologizing, I thought was kind of neat. And I, I hope we see him uh, longer term. In comics, it would be kind of neat to have the two fists of Kanshu team up, which I think that's where we're sort of getting. Um, I didn't understand the epilogue. I had to look up uh, Rutherford Winter. It looks like he was a Daughters of the Dragon villain or something, an ex Shield or Hydra guy, whatever. I don't really care. I guess we'll see where that goes. But I liked this comic, and I'm going to give, I liked it a lot better than the last issue, number seven. Um, it doesn't feel as decompressed or anything. It's like, I think the pace was cool. Um, I wasn't waiting for it to be over. (laughs) I really enjoyed it. So I would give this a, um, I would give this one an eight, uh, whichever that is on the Connor shoe scale. Um, mostly I feel like for the art, it's nice having the regular artist back and I think he's stepped it up even more. Um, I haven't had a chance to read Devil's Reign number four, is it yet? But I have a feeling that uh, I don't really need to quite yet. Um, One final note, I went to my LCS today to see, you know, pick up issue eight. It's Wednesday today. I should have had it. And uh, Diamond is late. They said it was on a train in New Jersey somewhere, and the comics probably won't come in until next week. So once again, the monopoly of Diamond distributors messes up my enjoyment of comic book reading. So thanks a lot, corporations. Anyway, guys, take care. Diamond, you suck. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But thank you, Noel. Thank you for that. Um, The big, beautiful yellow man, Noel, just to let you know, out of 10, big, beautiful yellow uh, man. Yeah, no, I think uh, he he enjoyed it as much as we all did. Well, maybe not quite as much, but like he's on that that level. We all, it's like, yeah. it's like, it gets a good, big, good thumbs up all round. And I yeah, agree. And, I mean, I think, like, I think a lot of the things that we don't really know where some of this is going and, uh, but we'll see. I mean. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, also as well, I think Age of Conchu, I think, yeah, Conchu is pretty accurately drawn still, Noel. It might be just a little kind of the style. I think some of the Shelby by... stuff is having Flint back and uh-huh, yep. being in the church and having the sort of structuralism of the church architecture sort of strikes yep. me as something that he would also do. And okay. also, I think, um, having his conchu, the big 
you know the big, big bird skull back and and yes. in that size i can see why would you say it? i mean like i didn't get yeah. that so much but i could see why it would hark back to the shelvy art yeah and uh yeah i mean his conchu capuccio's conchu is just a little bit slightly different to what you what you'd be used to as well um but thank you so much noel that uh, that's awesome awesome stuff hey that, that's a big one that's a big one from you noel so i'll take it i'll take it <laughs> yeah yeah for sure uh, Rebecca, yeah. Um, I think that pretty much wraps it up for us. Uh, thank you so much again. I mean, I can't wait to, oh, to can't wait. catch up with you again. We're going to be talking Captain a lot Jed. in the next few months. Yeah, we yeah. are. Yeah. I hope I hope you don't get sick of me. I'll uh, find but, some new uh, t-shirts. Uh, I promise. Yes, please, Rebecca. Not that one again, please. <laughs> I literally <laughs> wore it just for this. I'm going to change as soon as we finish recording. <laughs> Oh no, that was good. I yeah, you, you got me. I, I I didn't notice it at first when we just first met up, but then once I hit record and I saw he's like, uh, hang on, hang on, what is yeah, going on? What's she doing? <laughs> so, <here? Yeah. laughs> uh, so a huge thanks as always. But um, yeah, loonies, we'll we'll uh, see and hear Rebecca again for sure. Uh, thank you so much for the live stream, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, yes, people uh, get to to see us as well. Uh, anything you'd like to plug just before we go? trying to think what i've done most recently um mm. let us say the dc animated universe podcast we've been doing okay um i don't remember what we've done like some lego movie yeah, it sure. was good yeah. it was fine yeah you know <laughs> we're doing we're doing some yeah. more lego ones coming up that you know like we're, we're in this kind of weird moment before we get to sort of justice league dark and the actual yeah, okay. lego batman movie so uh nice. yeah uh but we're going up basically we're going our way through all the dc animated universe movies so that's awesome. that interesting a big shout out to you know mm -hmm. give it a listen yeah jump on board yeah. yeah listen to rebecca again um she's got great insight as well a big shout out to <gasps> i alan know nothing well. about dc which is the funniest <laughs> thing like so alan comes with all the facts and i go yeah i quite like dick grayson you know that's usually every episode <laughs> yeah. i quite like dick grayson like when's he yeah yeah Oh, he, he appeared in this one. I really like that He did episode. appear in the latest one. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Finally vindicated. Uh, uh, but definitely check it out. Uh, DCAU will be in our show notes, but always in our uh, link to the collective, as they are the collective yeah. members as well. Uh, Rebecca, we mentioned about the test uh, group watch. We'll be doing that. Yes. Uh, we'll be on Discord, on yeah. the Facebook group, uh, on, on Messenger as well. So any loonies that may be keen, just, you know, just drop in there, um, yeah, find I, Rebecca or myself. I'm testing it this yeah. weekend. Yeah. Like, I don't know where. Yeah. Because it'll just. Yeah. I'm, I'm working a lot this weekend. So just occasionally yeah. dropping into Discord and saying, shall we try Group Watch on Disney? Shall we try yep. Group Watch doing yeah. this? And see if we can get. So we can work out whether to schedule mm -hmm. in. And also give us your thoughts about good times to do Group Watches. Because yes, absolutely. obviously, me and Ray are not the majority. Like the majority, I'm <laughs> guessing, of the group and of our listeners are American. American, so um, yeah. you need to let us know when's good for you because like we we can be a little bit flexible and we can even do mm -hmm. it more than once because like you know the the group yeah. watch will be you can we can do one with Ray one with me who knows yeah you know like yeah. Uh, um but yeah so that's something we hope to plan hope to do this weekend is like test it with a Hawkeye episode or something exactly yeah and don't worry I, I'm sure Rebecca and myself are. I'll be, I think we'll be more than happy to watch it more than once. I, you I know, have a feeling when... that, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Might, might be. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, now, just before I forget, I didn't put this in the notes, but I wanted to shout out. Uh, so I got a message from Lena again, uh, one of the systems in our community as well. And Lena um, brought to my attention DID Awareness Day on March 5th. Uh, so would love to do something related to that. Uh, and they suggested that um, just putting out an invitation to any any uh, systems with DID or OSDD uh, that may be listening and write in uh, as to what the day means to them, uh, and then um, yeah, and and then we can just kind of read it out as well and and go through a particular episode. We'll, we'll have it uh, yeah. a DID awareness um, day episode, uh, and we can go through that. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Like well, uh, yeah. We have, yeah, I mean, we, Rebecca and I, we know a, a few uh, loony members that have the DID, that are part of a DID system. But uh, as Lena rightly says, I mean, we're, we're at 1.7 uh, 
uh, 1,700 members, uh, there might be more. So just a little shout out to anyone uh, who may want to. Uh, of course, you don't have to as well. Uh, it's yep. just something uh, that we want to throw out there. So March 5th, uh, we'll keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, and also, uh, finally, um, Elena just mentioned, yeah, if you want to use a pseudonym or anything like that, anything that... Um, anything you know, that makes it easier wanna... for you, it's fine. Exactly. Do whatever you need exactly. to do. Russell's just suggested we could do a little fundraiser, so we will uh, see. Oh, we'll fantastic. Yeah, like, yeah we'll good idea. I uh, won't be here on March the 5th, but be around off. No, no, we'll, Close we'll sooner, get, I'll be thinking uh, of you. I will send in like something. Rebecca, I will be printing out a one to one scale uh, cardboard cutout of you. Thank and you. I'll be putting it yeah. just, over he- just over here. Yeah. Yeah. Just over yeah, here. Just over there. That perfect. <laughs> 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 um, so no, great idea, Lena. Thank you so much. And yeah, we'll we'll keep you keep tuned in. Stay tuned whatever Ray's trying to say yeah. and uh, and we'll we'll do it uh, so big thank you again once uh, again Rebecca next phase episode 266 it's already recorded this is a weird one it was absolutely fun to do uh, guest is Justin the Owl Osgood the left velvet drape uh, and it's a wax and gibbous it's the other side of the moon so our segment, The Other Side of the Moon, is now all about the other side of uh, Moon Knight creators. So we're looking at Doug Mench's other story that he okay. did, apart from Moon Knight. Uh, yeah, and it's Lords of the Ultra Realm from 1986 to 1987. Uh, nothing to do with Moon Knight, but again, it's just something else that a Moon Knight alumni has done. It's a six-part mini plus a special that Justin and I talk about. And it, Rebecca, if you thought High Strangers was crazy, Lords of the Ultra Realm... My gosh, takes the cake. It is, <laughs> it is bonkers. I loved it. I loved awesome. chatting with Justin about it. Go check it out next week, uh, loony listeners. Uh, after you bask in the glory that is issue eight and just, you know, read it again and again. Uh, a big thank you once again to all our Patroonies. Uh, thank you so much. Please consider becoming a, a Patroonie yourself on patreon.com slash ITK Moon Knight. Uh, a big thank you to CLZ Comics. Again, collectors.com. Check it out for all your database and comic book collecting organizing needs. Yep. Uh, and a big thank you Mm-hmm. And a big thank you to Daniel Doing, creator of Fringe Night. It's an original indie based on original indie comic based on Erie, Pennsylvania's very own mysterious superhero. Check out his Patreon page, patreon.com slash fringe night twenty seven. Um our good man Drew Toombs pumping out the music on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash tombs, but also on Bandcamp at Lurk Music with a CK dot bandcamp dot Com. And finally, Dreamland Comics, the online store, the only store that is affiliated with ITK. Use the code MOON and get 20% off all their online back issues. Go find yourself some more stained glass scarlet stuff. And finally, as Rebecca mentioned, uh, well, alluded to, we are part of the collective. Uh, go check out Rebecca on the likes of DCAU, the DC Animated Universe podcast with Alan, Alan Sharp, awesome dude. Also, Sons of the Dragon and Immortal Iron Fist podcast. Rebecca's there as well. Uh, check it out. Um, and there's just a whole whole swathe of uh, nice shows there to check out. So, again, check out the link. And finally, contact us on email. Feedback at ITK Moon Knight. We've got a website, itkmoonknight.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Discord, Get Vocal, and Podchaser. And, incidentally, any reviews on Podchaser, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify would be greatly appreciated. It will help us get out there. Rebecca, our um, our numbers just incidentally are looking so good. I, I think it's because of the upcoming TV show. Yeah. I've uh, been looking at the, the numbers for, for the podcast are uh, looking good. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, thank you. A uh, big shout out. Yes. A big shout out to the, some other countries, uh, Norway, Bulgaria, and Turkey that have been listening lately. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rebecca, thank you once again. I know you've got a lot of work to do, do, but um, yeah. always a pleasure. Always yeah. a pleasure. Can't wait to um, do it again. Yes. And with that, loony listeners, may country watch over the denizens of the night. Bye-bye. Bye. and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. 
The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.